Welcome everybody to Hecate's Doorway Podcast. Welcome. That's the first time I ever did that. Is it? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's the first time I ever introduced us. At least we remember it this time. Yep. Over here on my left is Brandon. Sup. And I am your host, Gabriel. Pleasure to meet all of you, I'm sure. I hope. Alright, today's episode is going to be... About a script I'm, I was working on, about the Cecil Hotel, or as it is known now, a stay on Main. Yeah, this one will be uh, this one will be kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm sure most people know the Cecil Hotel for one reason or another. Oh yeah, definitely. Anything from the Elisa Lamb case to being one of the places Richard Ramirez would just fucking walk in after murdering someone. Yep. I looked then into some of his uh goose into some of his murders and holy shit. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna cover him soon too. The f- I saw his first one and I was sick just reading it. A nine year old girl. Fuck. Yeah. And women wanna fuck him. Is it because he looks like Michael Jackson? That has to be the only reason. Never mind the fact that he has halitosis. <laughs> the fuck is halitosis? Chronic bad breath. Really? His teeth are all rotten. Oh. So he has eternal bad breath. Like, Ew. And, and women still want to fuck him. I don't know. People are fucking weird. People are really weird. Yeah, that's that's one way to say it. All right. So let's let's dive into this. I guess we're going to start with the background of the hotel. Yeah. There's a, this episode's going to be not too long. Kind of like a medium short episode just because. Medium rare. Yeah. Most people know what it is and what it entails. I dug into some of the more, um, hopefully some of the more obscure ones that people didn't know about. Most of the other ones were like really publicized, so it's really easy for people to find out about these murders and deaths and suicides. Murder, death, and suicide. Apparently this is a um, website that's meant for like, that keeps track of um, hotels and... The amount of deaths and suicides that go on there's in there. A, there's a whole website just keeping track of all that. Yeah. Since uh, apparently, since the last time I checked, there were 11 suicides, one murder, and I can't remember what else was on the what what else was on there. But that was the most more recent one. This is not including all the ones that happened back way back then. This is more after it was renamed Stay on Main. Even after they rename it, there's still fucking suicides and shit going on? Oh, yeah. That place is very, uh, very dark energy. Ooh. All right. Let's get into this. Let's do it. The hotel itself was opened in 1924 by hoteliers William Banks Hanner, Charles L., and Robert H. Shops. I believe I said that right. As a tourist hotel. The hotel itself has 14 floors and has 700 guest rooms. It was later renamed Stay on Main in 2011, most likely due to all the dark events that happened prior to 2011. Then in 2017, the city council voted that the hotel was a historic cultural monument due to its significance as an architect's body of work. Back in 2021, it was rebranded as an affordable house which Provided affordable housing for 600 low-income residents. A bit more background information. The hotel itself cost $1.5 million to finish. They boasted of the marvelous marble lobby and stained glass and alabaster statuary. Oh. Sadly, the Great Depression hit not long after it was done. <laughs> like, it had a good long five years. And five then, years. And then and it then, hit. And then it turned into the shithole it is today. Yep. Wow. Though during the 40s, it did have a bit of a... It did have a bit more of a, a revive a bit. But as, as we all know, that did not... That fire did not last long. <laughs> no. It did not last long, sadly. The first documented suicide occurred on the evening of January 27th in 1927. Percy Osmond Cook died at the age of 52. He was found with what looked like a self-inflicted gunshot to the head. The reason for his death is because he couldn't reconcile with his wife and child. What that? What did he do? Uh, Oh, 
Did I not put it in there? Oh my god. Uh he shot himself in the head. Oh, I meant like what he what what oh, can he reconcile? No, I don't no. know. I was trying to find stuff, but there was no record of what happened. Yeah, that, that happens a lot with these older ones. Yeah, it's hard to find any information about like certain people and I'm gonna say that he came home hella drunk on Bud Light Lime. They didn't even have that back then. They just had regular Bud Light. Did they even have Bud Light back? I don't think they had Bud Light back then. You're right, it was whiskey. The next death occurred in 1931 on November 17th when a guest named W.K. Norton checked in under the name James Willis died from ingesting, po- ingesting poison capsules. He was 46 years old. He stayed at the hotel for seven days. And on the seventh day was when he took the pills that ended his life. That sounds like some, uh, some, uh, like CIA shit. Yeah. I don't know. I was trying to find more information on him, too, but, like, nothing. The only thing else I can find was he was from India. Interesting. Yeah. But, like, there was no notes, no nothing. So who knows why he died. A lot of people go there to fucking kill themselves, I guess. Oh, there are so many suicides. You want to kill yourself? Go to the stay don't go, on Main. Don't, don't go to the stay on Main. I'm Come on go. down to the stay on Main. Perfect place to end your stupid fucking life. If you do, please don't do it. Just stay there and watch the hauntings. Report back to us if you find anything. That'd be cool. That'd actually be pretty cool. And another suicide is that of a woman who had a baby with... Oh, oh I know this one. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't shit. able to find any concrete information, though, so it's kind of a rumor. That's true. I, ho- I Yeah, I remember this one from what I remember. She was having an affair with... I can't remember if there was a name, and probably not. There were various... Uh, from what I found, there were various um, interpretations to this uh, rumor that happened. So who knows what the real reason was. The one I remember hearing was that she had the baby in the hotel room. Yeah. And then she... Straight up yeeted it out the window. Yep. 14 floors up. Yep. That sucks for whoever it fell on. Oh, yeah, that's right. It fell on someone. I think... I forgot about that part. There was another one I remember where some like actual person jumped out the window, too. Yeah. And then they fell on someone. I can't... I think it's that second one that where they fell on someone and killed someone by accident. With the baby one, yeah. Uh, I think she also killed herself, too. Probably. And, yeah, this is the one where residents say they see a ghostly baby outside the window. That would be terrifying. Oh, fuck yeah, it would. <laughs> nope, I am out. I am not staying in the room with a floating baby ghost. <laughs> this ain't the Witcher. Oh. I can't just bury him and create something. Oh, God, that thing is so fucked up, that one in the witch room. Yeah. Oh. Fucking got to Find the baby's corpse, give it a name, redig it, and hope you did it right. Otherwise, you'll summon a very dangerous creature. <laughs> and, of course, one of the most infamous deaths that's associated with this hotel is Elizabeth Short, a.k.a. the Black Dahlia. And she didn't die in this hotel per se but this is the last place she was reported seen at. rumored though apparently according to the LAPD records she was never actually seen there so whoever had said that might have made it up but there's a good chance she might have crossed her there possibly what I what I've found so far is the per- person who is the last well not the last person who was reported to have seen her supposedly was one of the the attendants of the hotel yeah. watching her walk around before she left. Before that, it was a man who she was seeing for a little bit who she asked him to drop her off at the hotel yeah. because she was meeting her sister. But obviously that was a lie. Yeah. The, um, the one I found was, the report that I found was from someone named Steve Harvey. Apparently, he said that she was last seen with a girlfriend of hers and two other sailors drinking at the bar. Steve Harvey? Not that Steve Harvey. Different Steve Harvey, I think. I <laughs> it remember. was that Steve Harvey. I'll Is he weird. the killer? <laughs> oh, shit. God, I knew there was something up with that motherfucker. Oh, and now you're coming up again. 
Like coming up on one of the Saturday deaths. Oh, oh, that's right. The death of Pigeon Goldie. Oh, man. It's her nickname. Yeah, because she liked to feed the pigeons. Yep. I like to feed pigeons, too. Pigeons are cool. Yeah. She was found by guests, or not guests, guest server. She was found by the guest server in her room. I can't remember why they went in there, probably because she was late on payment or something. I think it's because they haven't heard from her in a very long time. Normally she'd get into contact with them. and That's true. She liked to talk to everyone, didn't she? Yeah. But when they found her, she had been raped and stabbed repeatedly. This poor old and woman. And beaten, too. And beaten. She got the uh, the old Ted Bundy treatment. Yep. Never never ask for that when you go to a masseuse. Nope. <laughs> can, I, can I get the Ted Bundy works? No. no. <laughs> what are you doing with that iron rod? Where'd you get that meat? Where'd you get that meat pounder? Where'd you get that big log? Uh, yeah. Her room was also found really ransacked as if whoever did that to her was trying to find something important. I think the saddest part about that one is the fact that it was more than likely just one of the many not well-off people who stayed there. Because as, as you said earlier, it was opened up for basically Section 8 for hotels. Yeah. So there was just a lot of people who were not in the right state of mind, had no money, had nowhere to go. Just saw this old defenseless woman and thought to take advantage of her. Yeah. It's probably... Oof. It is considered a hostile. Apparently there was one suspect in the murder of Pigeon Goldie. The man named Jack... Or, sorry, Jacques. Jacques B. Ellinger, I think that's how I said. I think Since so he too. was seen covered in blood in the street, but was later cleared as a suspect. Granted, a lot of people were seen covered <laughs> in blood in this hotel, especially at that time. Yep. I think that was just a normal thing. As to why he was cleared of a, as a suspect, I don't know, I didn't say. Probably just an alibi of some sort, or maybe it was just like, yeah, he's covered in blood, but it's so is that blood. guy, and that guy, and that guy. <laughs> And that guy yeah, with the pentagram on his head. <laughs> ain't that Richie? <laughs> Richie Ramirez. Oh, look, it's that Australian guy. Oh, God. Jack Unterweger. Yep. Oh, yep. God. This hotel has just attracted the worst kind of people, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Of course, we have to get into Elisa Lamb a little bit. Mm-hmm. Who died under mysterious conditions while staying in the hotel. That one is pretty fucked. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go on a limb here and say, I think she just had a fucking mental breakdown. Could be. Because she was on medication. And yeah. it was seen that she wasn't taking her medication for a long time. And I remember the guy who initially reported that the latch was closed later stated that it was actually left open. Oh, and I did then, not know that. Yeah. Damn, okay. And I think, I think when they found it in the morning, it was left open. Hmm. Yeah, she just had some kind of mental break, and no, you, you'll never understand what someone's going through during yeah. that because they're not thinking rationally. Yeah, oh, you, no. you can't ask why would they climb into a water tank and take off their clothes. No one knows. They don't know why. As someone that takes antipsychotics, I can understand. Yeah, there's a few times I've gone without taking them, and uh, it ain't fun. No, your brain goes all loopy loop, and uh, yeah, it ain't fun. <laughs> Is that when? Dobby comes out of your bed. <laughs> Master need a rubby rub. <laughs> a little lower, Dobby. A little, a little lower. 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 Dobby, can I use the Vengarian Leviosa on Master's? Ah. Uh. All right. Dobby, get crusty sock. <laughs> you mother. <laughs> what? Alright, now on to the killers that have stayed in this hotel. Fuck yeah. I'm sure y'all know this killer as the uh, as the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. I think Richard shit. Ramirez is the scariest of all of the serial killers I know of. Yeah, he um I mean he was also known as the walk in walk in killer. Or the scr- the screen door intruder. That too. He had many nicknames. Which is he weird. Had a lot, yeah. He was the most terrifying, in my opinion, just because he had n- nothing that any serial killer has. Like, 
you know, serial killers always have a very strict set of like victims and how True. they kill. They kill a specific type, a specific way. Yep. He would kill whoever. He would rape whoever. He would rape and not kill. He would kill and not rape. He would He'd just, just do steal. whatever the fuck he wants. It's terrifying. And how his first victim was a nine-year-old Chinese American girl. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's not forget that everyone who wants to fuck that piece of shit. Yeah, that yeah that too. That's just fucking weird. Apparently, he had a, a cousin for who was uh, I can't remember what war. Probably Vietnam. Probably Vietnam. Mm. For some reason, that's where a lot of the worst people came out of. Mm. You hear a lot of fucked up stories like this guy. I can't remember what his name is, uh, but he had a cousin who would tell him all kinds of stories about how he would torture and rape women over in Vietnam. Damn. He taught him how to uh, stalk and pee and break into houses. He taught him the best ways to kill people. He put a lot of things into that boy's head. We also saw him kill himself right in front of him. The cousin, he shot himself in the fucking head. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't feel sorry for that fucker. No, I don't feel sorry for anyone in that that case. Uh, Damn. We'll definitely well, go into that later on. Yeah. In our special little series. Ooh. Ooh. He's also uh, the only, literally the only, quote-unquote, satanic killer. That's right. There's Anytime anyone ever put some bullshit about Satanists being murderers and shit, he is the only, only one. And I'm willing to wager that he just did it for shock value. Not because Possibly. he was an actual Satanist. And when I got into his background, I did say that he was a bit into Satanism and the occult, but not a whole lot. No, I mean, he his favorite band was ACDC. And back in, you know, the 70s, ACDC was shock rock. Yeah. So I think he was just doing it for the shock. You know, he puts a pentagram on his hand and says, Hell Satan in the courtroom. He gets all the attention. Yep. And that's probably what he wanted. That's what every serial killer wants is fucking attention. They Give your kids known. attention. Please Good do. attention. As someone who uh, was lacking attention as growing up, give them good attention. Don't turn them out. Don't make them turn out bad. <laughs> all right. So that's then... a parent PSA from two people who have no kids. <laughs> from two people who could probably do a better job raising kids than half the parents I see on the day to day. Uh -huh. Which is fucking sad, because I don't think I could raise a good kid. I could just raise a better kid. Yep. Yeah. I mean, anyway. At least it won't be serial killers. I hope, I hope not. Yo. Unless you drop them on their head enough. According to the desk clerk at the time, he had uh, he had seen Richard Ramirez a few times, staying there a few time, a few weeks at the hotel. Mm -hmm. So that while he was out there killing, he had, of course, come back. Get change and whatnot. They come back to the hotel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his base of operation. He'd walk down those halls just covered in blood. Yep. One of his victims, I can't remember which. Um, you know, this isn't the Richard Mary's episode, so I'd, I'm not going to we'll, get too much into it. We'll find that out later. But one of his victims, he cut out her eyes, and he came back to the hotel with those eyes and Model put them on his Chia, nightstand. That you, the damn. Yeah, yeah, no. So, no one gave a shit in this hotel. Nope. That, that should paint a picture of the things that the people who work in this hotel see already, just with Richard Ramirez shit. alone. Sorry. He was eventually caught in in August 30th in 1985 when a group of Los Angeles residents saw him and kept him from escaping until the police showed up and detained him. Oh, man. Have you seen that footage? No. With this footage? Yeah, there's I didn't footage. know there was footage. Oh, Holy man. crap. He's just, like, running around. People are, like, stopping him, like, getting in, like, a fucking barricade. He's freaked. Because he came back from a bus trip from, I can't remember where, but he, like, he took a vacation. <laughs> and he comes back and his face is everywhere because they have finally figured it out. And he's just like, holy shit, I gotta get out of here. So he starts booking it and residents are just like, holy fuck, that's a Night Stalker. We gotta stop him. It's insane. Damn, that's the whole <laughs> fucking insane. Oh my god, I know. It's just makes me want to do a Night Stalker episode now. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, that'll be later. Another infamous killer was Austin Jack Unterweger. I hope I said that right. Unterweger. Oh, Austerian. Austerian. Un Unterweger. 
I bet. He was Austrian. That guy is a total piece of shit. Yep. He stayed in the hotel in 1991. While there, he strangled three pos- prostitutes before he was eventually caught. But of course, before that, he had a he he had killed before that. Oh yeah. Just not here in the U.S. And that's another episode, I think, because that guy is a piece of work. Just a little tidbit on that. He killed a prostitute, I believe, a sex worker. Put their own ball. Yeah. Uh, he went to prison. That's his MO. Um, while in prison, he wrote a book called Purgatory. And uh, because people of Austria loved his book so much, he basically got out of prison. Yep. Everyone was like, oh, he's a changed man now. Isn't that what happened with Hitler? He wrote a book. Well, he, yeah, kind of. Yeah, because of that book, Mein Kampf, that he mm-hmm. wrote, and then... I don't know, we're not very educated, as you can tell sometimes. No, yeah, that's more or less what happened. Yeah. Um, but shit like that happens with just about every serial killer. There's, like, two or three I can think of at the top of my head right now who got arrested for something minor or not minor. Um, went... Uh, not went to prison, either went to prison or just went on probation. They were supposed to get something like uh, therapy and shit. Yeah. All the times that I can think of, they would sit down for like one session and the therapist would be like, oh no, you're good, you can go. Some weak ass therapy. Fucking uh, Ed Kemper, one of them, after he murdered his grandparents. Yeah, because murdering your grandparents means you and then having a good therapy session means, oh, no, he's okay. He's not mentally Yeah, no, they're just stable. like, oh, he's he's good. He's good now. He's this changed boy. No, that's not how that works. Fucking uh, one one serial killer, Joseph Callinger, was uh, uh, accused of, like, assaulting his children. He, like, burned his daughter's thigh and oh, beat the fuck. shit out of his son. And he didn't get arrested, but he got on probation and he had to go to regular, um, uh, you know, like, therapy meetings. Sat down for one five minute session, and the therapist is like, "Oh no, you're good." That was it. Shit, this is why most people don't trust therapists. And Sadly. then he goes off to murder one of his sons. Yeah, and that's so. Yeah, sadly, it all ties back to Jack Unterweger, who wrote a book, and then went on to murder like eight different sex workers, mm-hmm. and was attracted to the hotel. Yep, another infamous killer. Another one we'll do a whole episode on because that story is crazy too. Oh yeah, especially the way he was caught. The man literally had receipts to everywhere he was and everywhere he killed. Yep. That's why it's trophies. To conclude this short little episode, whether you guys believe the hotel is haunted or not, whether you believe if if the ground it's built on is a port of hell, like some people claim. That'd be fucking sick if it was. <laughs> that explains so much. Or if it just happens to be all coincidental and... It's just bad luck and bad timing. How to deny all of the bad and negative shit that happened in that hotel. Yeah, I really look at it two ways. The more skeptical side of my brain says that these people were obviously attracted there because of its reputation of having, you know, all those um, kinds of troubled people there. Probably yeah. made them think that they could get away with more. Jack Unterweger went there specifically because he was quote-unquote writing another novel about the crime going on down there yeah but the other part of my brain so there's definitely something going on like it's it's it definitely has a negative energy whether or not it's just all the fucked up shit that's happened there yeah who knows if any of you ever go down there or have been down there can you let us know if you uh experience anything at all yeah, if anyone's been there, send us an email at heckadiesdoorwaypod at gmail.com. Yeah. Tell us your experience. Whether it's something as simple as nothing happened, or as simple as a cup falling, and you think it might have been the wind, or something spooky. Or like someone gave you the uh, Ted Bundy experience. Ooh, nothing. <laughs> if they did, I'm, I hope they're alive. <laughs> nah, but yeah, if you really saw anything, that let us know. Let us know. Yeah. Also... If any of you have seen that fucking documentary on Netflix about oh, it. Oh, yeah. That musician, that shit pisses me off. <laughs> it, he's not doing anything anymore, so you can't literally like, support him. Yeah. The one who was pushed to nearly kill himself by all the fucking internet sleuths. Yep. It's fucking bullshit. Not the first time that's happened. No, it happens a lot. People because... think that, oh, 
We found him. This is the guy. He's probably the one that did it. And it's it never harass him. Ugh. It, yeah. Internet sleuths, like, I get it. Sometimes they pull some shit up, but most of the time, they just don't understand how long it takes for fucking investigations to work, and they're just like, it's been two days. You're not doing anything. What's going on? You're hiding stuff. I need to find out. Yeah. That's not how it works. Chill out. Fucking, um... Get some help. The documentary of, uh, Don't, don't Mess With Cats. Oh, yeah. And what happened to that poor dude yeah. that lived down in Brazil. Mm-hmm. He had nothing to do with it. No. So people assumed it was him, and he was already in a dark place, sadly. Y'all need to chill. Yeah. I know we don't really trust cops too much from time to time, but let the professionals handle it. Otherwise, you'll be more or less responsible for someone's death. Yeah. I hope I hope they feel bad. I, 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 I hope they have good. trouble sleeping at night. Yeah. I don't care if they had good intentions. Fuck them. That's a saying. The world to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> Except not cool hell with fucking chugs coming out of the pit. <laughs> Bad hell where Hitler is fucking lubing up his ass for another fucking pineapple to get shoved up what in. Fuck t- oh, the pineapple. No, not pineapple express. Um, little Nicky. Yeah, little Nicky. <laughs> I forgot about that scene. Uh, well, I guess that's the episode. Yep. All right. Thank you all for listening. This was fun. Yeah. A little exploration. This is this is pretty, a little different, but mm-hmm. it was fun. It was really good. Yeah, just something simple, and but something with a bit of meat to it. A bit of meat. Especially since our next episode is going to have a lot more. <laughs> it's going to have a lot more meat. What's the next one about? The next one is going to be about the Valeska Axe Murders. Okay. I know we said we were going to do Richard Chase and the history of vampires, but we had to push that back a little bit. Yeah, because I'm going to be gone for a couple weeks. Yeah, Gabe's leaving, so we had to halt the more research-heavy one. Not, not more, though there's a lot more research that goes into those two. These ones oh, yeah. were already kind of half had them in the bank, and we just kind of sat down and fucking spent way too much time. <laughs> pumping out some scripts hopefully those are fun though yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed them hopefully you guys found something interesting or enjoyable about them or something you already know about that you know about now yeah and when this fucker comes back we'll be jumping straight into the nasty blood pit that is richard chase oh man (sighs) i'll be gone for a couple weeks so you have all the time to finish it oh yeah i'm gonna have some fucking crazy scripts written up <laughs> but, uh, all right let's uh let's see then i can focus on the which one. Oh yeah 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 we're gonna yeah game's gonna take charge and write me a script all about witches and witchcraft and ye that'll be a little journey to go down oh it's gonna be a long one i can tell you that much Hell for yeah. sure oh that's you so, so. get back to that later ah this one wasn't my phone. Now, for once, my phone made the buzz. <laughs> all, right, all right, people. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for supporting any way you have. Thank yep. you for commenting, liking, rating us. Five stars only. Five stars only. Otherwise, you get a shitty cake from Brandon. Anyone who's donated to the Patreon, thank you. We... Has anyone actually donated to that? Not yet. Okay. But if you do, that'd be <laughs> sick. Uh... I'll leave all our links in the show notes if you want to check any of that shit out. Yeah. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Blessed be, and have a good day. Hail Satan, everyone. Why do you keep saying that again? Because I like to. (laughs) Fair enough. Gotta bring some Satanist charm to this show, bro. There's not enough Satanic podcasts out there. Really? Yeah, not really. Oh, okay. I've only ever heard of one where someone sign off for a false scene. Yeah, that's a podcast. We need more. Okay. <laughs>